want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science, some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. Heat transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. 
It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. What's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Two teams already bound for the NAIA National Tournament face-off to cap off the conference season. It's the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference Tournament Championship tonight from the Schaefer Center in downtown Fort Wayne, Indiana as the number 16 ranked nationally Indiana Tech Warriors, the number one team in the WHAC during the regular season, take on the Siena Heights Saints who are the number two team in the regular season in the conference in the receiving votes category of the top 25. Should be a dandy of a matchup on this 
this Monday night from Fort Wayne, Indiana. The two top teams in the conference all year long facing off in Fort Wayne once again as Indiana Tech looks to cap their season with perfection against the WHAC. The Warriors, a perfect 22-0 during the regular season. 2-0 so far in the postseason with wins over Aquinas and Cornerstone. Look to go 25-0 this year against opponents out of the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Perfection is well within reach for Indiana Tech. On the other side, the one team that's kept Siena Heights from perfection in the WHAC during the regular season was Indiana Tech. The Saints went 20-0 against everybody else in the conference, 0-2 against Indiana Tech with the Warriors winning at Siena Heights in early November, 48 to 41. And then here in Fort Wayne back in late January, January 31st, an 80 to 67 win for Indiana Tech. Warriors jumped out to a 27 to nine lead in that game. Three point shooting was sharp in the first half. Things got tighter as the game progressed and give a lot of credit to Siena Heights for that. But Indiana Tech was able to pull through and pick up another conference win on that January 31st, which then snowballed into the 22-0 and conference record. Siena Heights, they've won nine consecutive games coming into play this evening. 15-1 and at home, 10-2 and on the road this year, and 2-0 and in neutral site games. Actually started the year 0-2 with a loss to IU South Bend and then to Indiana Tech. They've won 20 out of their last 28 games. 70 points per game on average for Siena Heights. 42.6 rebounds a contest is 30th best in the national rankings in national statistics. That points category puts them at 83rd. But what the Saints team has been known for is their defense. 50.2 points per game allowed. Second best in the NAIA as a unit this season. Indiana Tech has been pretty solid defensively as well this year. They rank inside the top 10 in terms of points allowed per game this year, and they're the best team when it comes to limiting turnovers this season. Indiana Tech number one, just over 10 turnovers per game for the Warriors, but that is the best in the NAIA so far this season, and, and we're to the point of the year where you can just say Indiana Tech has been the best team in terms of taking care of the basketball this season across the entire landscape of the NAIA. Indiana Tech Warriors led this season so often by the grad student out of Mississinawa and nearby Mississinawa High School in Gas City, Indiana, Erica Foy, closing in on 600 points this season. She scored more than 2,000 in her career, has almost 1,200 career total rebounds to go along with those more than 2,000 points. She's the all-time scoring leader in Indiana Tech women's basketball program history. But it hasn't just been Foy that's made this team go. And the starting five and really onto the bench down to eight or nine for Indiana Tech, they've brought this group to a 27-3 overall record. The starting five for the majority of the season, Julie Juliana Burris, Genevieve Decker, Taylor Covington, Erica Foy, and then Corinne Smith. Those five, pretty much with the exception of four, maybe five games, started every game in conjunction with one another this season. Bethany Worm injured early in the year. Boy, has her presence been felt in a big way since she's returned to the floor for it. Indiana Tech, excuse me, would have been interesting to see had she gotten her feet truly under her earlier in the season, how much better Indiana Tech may have fared uh, in those games in Hawaii as well as against Indiana Wesleyan, but that's something that is in the past. Bethany Worm, Amorous Lowry off the bench. We've seen big time minutes from Lauren Barton at times off the bench as well this year for Indiana Tech. And then it goes down the line, the players who make the starting five and those eight better in practice every single day as well and we may get a chance to see some of those girls take the floor here this evening. Head coach Jesse Biggs in her 12th season for Indiana Tech. The Warriors winning another regular season title. They've won the WHAC in either the regular or postseason in every year since the 2017 and 18 season. Coach Biggs has led the Warriors to 30 wins in four out of the last six years and 27 wins this season. Really impressive. Sue Siljebeck's on the other side. She's in her 20th year at the helm for Siena Heights. She's got the most career wins as a head coach in Siena Heights women's basketball program history. And Coach 
Coach Siljebeck and company are still searching for that first elusive postseason or regular season crown in the WHAC. They've been in three tournament games in the conference tournament. All three of those games actually were played against now uh, Division II Davenport. 2014, 2015, and 2017 are the three times that Siena Heights has made it into the finals of the WAC tournament, and now a chance for SHU to try and get that first postseason conference title. And boy, would they be putting that title up with some pride for Siena Heights in Adrian, Michigan. What's also on the line tonight, potentially, for Siena Heights, and we know they're going to the national tournament, and, and that was the big preface and everything coming into this evening, was because Indiana Tech won the regular season title. No matter what happens here today, Siena Heights is going to be that second automatic qualifier to the national tournament from this conference. But Siena Heights with a win today could push their overall win total this season to 28 victories. That would be the most in any year in program history in terms of most wins in one season. 27 wins, three separate occasions, 1978 and 79, 2019, 20, and now here in 23 and 20. WHAC postseason championship is on the line tonight at the Schaefer Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We've got some other conference tournament games on the horizon as well. And then men's tournament basketball action tomorrow night will crown a champion in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Uh, you can head to the Crusaders, Madonna Crusaders website if you want to check out all that action, which will be going on tomorrow night. But in terms of what we're looking at this evening with other conferences getting ready to round out their regular and postseason championships, Cumberlands and Campbellsville facing off in the Mid-South Conference Tournament Final. Campbellsville currently at number three in the country and looking to take home a conference tournament crown. Cumberland's ranked number 15 currently. William Baptist out of Arkansas will be taking on Columbia out of Missouri in the American Midwest Conference Tournament Finals. Nearby action in Indianapolis tonight. Marion playing host to Indiana Wesleyan in the Crossroads League Tournament Championship. John Brown will play Mid-America Christian in the Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament. They're only in the semifinals for the KCAC Championship tonight. Tabor is hosting St. Mary for the KCAC crown. 64 teams will make the national tournament. Indiana Tech has been a mainstay in the national tournament. Uh, as I mentioned, six out of the last or every season since 2017-18, they've won a regular or postseason crown. Six of the last seven years have been uh, during the regular season for Indiana Tech. But these teams, they're both going to the national tournament. Where they could be seated, that could be determined a little bit here this evening. The selection show for the national tournament for NAIA women's basketball will take place on March 7th. The opening round of the NAIA national tournament, March 15th and 16th at host sites around the country. Will be very interesting to see uh, where these two teams will be headed for the national tournament and everybody else for that matter. Again, selection show is coming up just a couple days from now, March 7th. It is a eight an 8 p.m. Eastern start time for the selection show, which will be aired on the YouTube channel for the NAIA. So you can check all, out all of that action there, Marion currently the number one team in the country, followed by Dort and Campbellsville. Indiana Wesleyan at number four, so top four matchup for the Crossroads League Championship tonight in Indianapolis. Clark in Iowa comes in at number five. Carroll out of Montana at six. Concordia, Nebraska at seven. Vanguard in California is at eight. Dakota State at number nine. And then Georgetown out of Kentucky currently at number 10. Three losses on the season for Indiana Tech have all come against teams that are currently ranked in the top 25. Providence right now at number 14, followed by Indiana Wesleyan uh, and Indiana Wesleyan at number four. They've lost to Carroll, not Providence, or beat Carroll, excuse me, and then Georgetown was the other loss. Drawing a blank on that for some reason, my apologies. But the same thing can be said on the other side for Siena Heights. IU South Bend at number 19 currently, and then Indiana Tech, the other two losses, they come in at number 16. Both teams 
getting ready to head to the benches as we get set for the national anthem and starting lineups coming your way after this break. We'll pause for the anthem, come back with starting lineups from the Schaefer Center. WHAC Tournament Championship on the line as Indiana Tech chases perfection on this Monday night. We'll be back to the Schaefer Center in three minutes with your starting lineups. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic, it's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes, it was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors! You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more. We are back and ready for your starting lineups. Let's meet the starters for the visitors on the scoreboard. The Siena Heights Saints, 27 and three overall, 20 and two during the regular season in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Kayla Hinton leads the charge offensively for Siena Heights alongside a good list of upperclassmen, seniors and grad students in the starting lineup for Coach Siljebeck, Olivia DeLong, Iana Wan, Jakari Alvin, and Jillian Gelso round out the starting five for Siena Heights here on this Monday evening. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship is up for grabs tonight as we meet the starters now on the other side of the aisle the Indiana Tech Warriors, number 16 in the nation. The starting five has been this way, like I mentioned earlier, pretty much all season long. 
Burris, Decker, Covington, Foy, and Smith. Let's turn it over to our public address announcer to hear the announcement of the starting five. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship up four grabs. Here is how we got to this point. Siena Heights beating Lawrence Tech and Concordia. Indiana Tech beating Aquinas and Cornerstone to get us to the championship. And Siena Heights, the thorn in the Saints side this year has been Indiana Tech. See if they can change things in this tournament championship. We have three officials on the floor currently, but we have another extra here just in case. Tip is off, we are underway. Siena Heights and Indiana Tech for the postseason championship. Warriors chasing perfection in 2024. Hinton on the drive, blocked by Foy on the first possession. And Indiana Tech down the floor quickly. Juliana Burris back out to Erica Foy. Last time inside the Schaefer Center for the great number 11. It's Burris from long range and out. First shot is off for Indiana Tech. Hinton just under 15 points per game. Too aggressive. Ball was not tipped. It's turned over. And Indiana Tech basketball. Warriors rocking the all grays. Officials are now going to discuss if that ball may have been tipped on the entry pass in from Hinton. And Siena Heights fans seem to be pleased. Saints will have the basketball underneath. It'll be 19 on the shot clock recalled. Hinton inbounding again to Long, Juan, Alvin, and Gelso join Hinton on the floor. Seniors and grad students, very experienced bunch for Siena Heights. They beat Indiana Tech twice last year. Hinton kicks out Juan. Shot clock at single digits. Juan driving inside and banks it through. Siena Heights is on the board first. Iana Juan. About eight points per game for her. Full court pressure broken by Indiana Tech. Smith travels on her way downhill. And that is the defense we're going to consistently see tonight from Siena Heights. 50.2 points per game allowed on the year. Second best in the NAIA. Indiana Tech turned it over there, but only just, just a shade over 10 turnovers per game. That is best in the nation. Hinton to the long. And Iana Juan already with two points, trying to go to work. Dives inside, kicks out for a jump shot from Alvin, too strong, and Foy collects. Indiana Tech pushing up the floor quickly so far this evening. Covington for Smith, Burris, everybody getting a touch on this possession. Midway through the shot clock, Decker. Now Burris backing in, kicks out. Smith catch and shoot three is pure, and Indiana Tech's on the board. Corinne Smith from long range for the Warriors. Smith has been part of that sharp shooting crew from the outside for Indiana Tech. Saw them light up the first quarter against Siena Heights back on January 31st. Alvin cutting to the rim, a little bit of contact on the hips, missed the lay-in. Two and a half minutes already off the clock in this opening quarter. Good environment, good 
amount of Siena Heights fans just beyond the bottom of your screen. Decker, baseline, wraps a pass in. Foy, jump shot, rolls out. And we'll see how long both head coaches go with their starting fives in this game. How you handle depth is going to be a big part of a championship environment. DeLong and a foul on a reach in against Indiana Tech. It's on Decker, her first and the first team foul. That brings Bethany Worm on for Indiana Tech. And Worm, been one of those players, you just go do this, go do this, go do this, and she's nodded along and stepped up to the charge, rebounding, passing the ball, and then scoring on some nights, or that order could be reversed. She always plays good defense, looking to take a charge at all times. Hinton, extra step and a travel, turned over by Sienna Heights. Good stop for the Indiana Tech defense. Warriors offensively average on that 70 point total per game. Deflected pass by Alvin and Wong comes up with it. It was three on three momentarily. Gelso catching fire and hit. Ida Michigan stand up. Jillian Gelso hits the tray, five to three. Hinton on a deflected ball, can't save it. But again, defense for Siena Heights and finding ways to get extra possessions, what they're all about, forcing early shots. That inbound dangerous. A foul on Siena Heights. It's Olivia DeLong, her first. Eva Alcock is on for the first time for Siena Heights this evening. Burris to the top of the key for Foy. Smith's got the three. She gives off to Burris. Baseline. Burris too strong. Foy trapped underneath. And pass deflected out of bounds stays with Indiana Tech. 17 to work with, 6.03 first quarter. Have a media timeout at our first whistle under five, or if somebody takes a timeout before then, Amaris Lowry on for the first time. Juliana Burris coming out. Slow start offensively for both teams. Jump the passing lane, Covington hangs on. Got to be crisp with every pass against this defense. Foy driving to the rim. Good finish for Erica Foy. First bucket for the all-time leading scorer, WAC Player of the Year, two-time Defensive Player of the Year in the conference. The accolades go on and on, and hopefully an All-American once again this season, but with a little bit better honors. Deflected pass by Covington stays with the Saints. Coach Siljebeck calling out what she wants offensively here. Gelso on the deep pass for Alcott. Alvin stops, forced it up against Foy. Hand was up there and Foy may have taken an elbow to the jaw. That's Foy's first and the second team foul on Indiana Tech. So Decker and Foy each with a personal foul early. Uh, and really, Erica Foy's done a nice job this season, knock on wood, of staying out of foul trouble, as have most of the Tech players, but this is a Siena Heights team that shoots among the most free throws in the country per game. Percentage isn't as great as they'd like it to be in the 60s, two for two here, but they shoot a lot of free throws and that causes different issues as opposed to just what you see from their defense. Approaching our first media break. Deep ball from Covington's off to the right. It's 
7-5, early lead for Siena Heights. Juan's got two points, trying to get into the paint. Nifty footwork, and the lay-in falls. Liana Juan, good for two. Seven zero run currently for Sienna Heights. Foy can't stop it. Hinton patient as she crosses the Warrior logo. Hinton back out. Alvin not going to take the three. She'll go to 15. Too strong. Next whistle brings us to immediate timeout. Up and down action. Covington cuts. Worm the find. Nine to seven. Yeah, both teams right now, they're looking for that media timeout, trying to catch your breath. Good tune up for the national tournament here tonight. Hinton to the left block, got good space, missed the lay in, loose ball, out of bounds. It'll be Indiana Tech basketball when we return to the Schaefer Center. 342 left in the opening quarter. Saints ahead by two. SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. 9-7, Siena Heights leading Indiana Tech in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship. Live from the Schaefer Center, full court pressure out of the break for Siena Heights. Warrior student section has just grown by a big number on the far side of the floor. And they'll be making lots of noise. A couple of different teams entering the building as Worms' lay an attempt is off. Amaris Lowry, Bethany Worm, Taylor Covington, Lauren Barton is in, and Juliana Burris. Five on the floor for Indiana Tech. Barton's first appearance of the night. Juan lives up to Hinton. Kick out on the first touch offensively for Brooke Redman, and Redman finding her way to the rim. Redman off the bench, two points. Her way, Madison Weiss is also in for Siena Heights. Local kid, back in the 2-6-0 once again. Out of Central Noble High School. Talked about her the last time these two sides squared off here at the Schaefer Center. Convenience store numbers right now. Indiana Tech trailing by four. Covington traveled. And a turnover against the Warriors. Third turnover so far for Indiana Tech. And a good first quarter so far. It's about to be a lot louder inside the shape for center the rest of the night. Driving in, Redman shot, alter, tapped out for Lowry. Gets it to Burris, ahead for Decker. Kept her pivot foot. And slings it to Smith. Tight defense, Hinton with a reach in and a foul on Sienna Heights. Two 
Taylor Covington is on for Amaris Lowry. Best environment we've seen inside the Schaefer Center in a little bit. Decker for Foy. Starting five on the floor currently for Indiana Tech. Shot clock at single digits and six. Burris on the attack, left lane, kick out for a Foy jumper. It's off the iron, hit and rebound. No numbers for the Saints. Juan against Smith. Iana Juan with four points already. Make it six as she finds the bank. Warriors break that trap quickly. Decker, skip pass for Foy. Burris near side. Now Covington, shot clock single digits again. Four to shoot, Foy, fade away. Beautiful move from Erica Foy. Great environment at the Schaefer Center, final minute of the first quarter. Hinton gives up for Wong. Wong driving, kicks left elbow, jump shot, Alcock. No good. 11 second difference between shot and game clock. No real chance at a two for one for Indiana Tech. Decker, one for four this season from three, rolled out. Shot clock is off. Hinton just dribbling out up high. Six to shoot. Juan on the attack, blocked by Foy. Erica Foy the block, point seven left in the quarter. Indiana Tech just inbounding. That's how the first quarter comes to a close. Entertaining so far in the tournament championship for the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. We'll be back to the Schaefer Center right after this. SummitStaySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. Thirteen to nine. Sienna Heights leads Indiana Tech as we get ready for the second quarter. Back at the Schaefer Center here on SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Sienna Heights in that first quarter, thirty-eight percent from the floor. Juan leading with six points. Indiana Tech at 33% from the field. And a good game thus far. Inside, Decker fouled by DeLong. First foul of the quarter, and that's the second on DeLong, so she'll check back out of the game.
Decker, two free throws, first is out. One for two for Genevieve Decker. Indiana Tech back to within a possession. Weiss giving up near side for Alvin. Driving in against Decker, Alvin traveled. And we're headed to the other side, just lost her foot. Pulled the chair a little bit by Genevieve Decker. Good work defensively. Warriors inbound it. Full court pressure continues. Tech breaking it, Foy to Smith. And a chance to tie on this possession, potentially for Indiana Tech. Covington, good window to Decker, and the lay-in's good. Taylor Covington, almost four and a half assists per game this year, puts her in the top echelon of players in the NAIA. Top 40 nationally in terms of assists per game on average. Trying to get around the screens. Vice pulled up from three. No. Alcock offensive rebound. Missed it. Good defense from Foy. Whack defensive player of the year two times for a reason. Up the floor. Decker gets the blow by. Missed the finish. Offensive rebound. Burris open three. In and out. Good look, though. Those are the looks you got to continue to pull if you're Juliana Burris. Definitely not afraid to. Juan finds the angle, and she's got eight points for Sienna Heights. It's matched her season average here in the first half. Inside, Decker. Kick out was deflected. Ten to shoot. Back in, Decker, height advantage, give her two more. And Indiana Tech is feeding Genevieve right now. Saw something they liked with that height advantage and they're continuously going to it. Foy playing on the outside that possession. Alcock against Decker. Extra help from Foy, didn't matter, nice finish on the left hand. Also a senior for Sienna Heights. This group so experienced. Foy facing up. Attack. Got to be big time foul there as Foy hits the deck. Coach Biggs talking to Genevieve Decker right now, and I think the conversation is, if that's the size advantage they're giving us, you gotta you gotta find a way to face up on the inside and, and post up for the basketball. It's last possession, you saw how perfectly it worked. Boy's first free throw is good. And one of the best parts about Genevieve Decker's game is, is her footwork underneath. She can put that on full display and it'd be an extra advantage as well in the process. They'll take that. Two for two for Erica Foy. One point game. Getting closer to our halftime break. Foy now with six points. Nice spin, Sean, for the first time. She had 12 the last time these two sides met. Too strong from Alcott. Burris. And a bump on a foul on Hinton, and I believe that's her second. It is, and Jillian Gelso hops right off the bench and in for Hinton. So both DeLong and Hinton, two starters with two personal fouls. 
That was the third team foul of the quarter. Foy for the lead, no. Worm offensive, rebound, stick back. Tech on top. Double screens out up high, Guys Finch now curls around him. Juan kicks off, Alvin just in front of that three point stripe, no. Loose ball, Bethany Worm with a rebound. Little things that add up, that's one of those things. Defensive rebounds. Covington. Floating into Foy, a lot of traffic, and a block for Alcock, but it's Indiana Tech with it. Single digits on the clock. Covington. Step through, all the way to the rim. Timeout, Sienna Heights. Taylor Covington takes herself to the rim, finishes at the cup, and Indiana Tech's got a three-point lead. 5.27 to go in the first half. We're back to the Schaefer Center after this. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, Warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Twenty to seventeen, Indiana Tech now leading Siena Heights. Tournament championship basketball in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Indiana Tech on the defensive side out of the first timeout tonight for Siena Heights. Out there for the first time for the Saints currently, Gabrielle Martin. And this whistle is coming against Bethany Worm and again, putting your body on the line. She does it a whole heck of a lot. Look back on a replay real quick here. Covington, shot clock winding down. Just perfect step. Juan inbounding. Got to go deep for Geis Finch. Covington just backed up enough to keep away from a foul. Imani Geis Finch. Juan, 10 to shoot. Reverse lay in, no good. And Worm, despite a little extra push from Alvin, able to secure the rebound. Martin knocks it away. Did not see Gabrielle Martin the last time these two sides faced off at the Schaefer Center. Freshman on the floor for Sienna Heights and, and needing some minutes with DeLong in foul trouble. Alcock getting a breather at the moment. Foy, dribbling back out, Smith, again, shot clock winding. Burris, she's on the attack, Juliana, nifty finish. Twenty-two, seventeen. Indiana Tech up by five. Sienna Heights led after the first. Martin, jump shot is pure. Big time minutes off the bench. 
Got to have that in tournament environment. Burris nearly lost it on her way to the rim. Have to back it out for Indiana Tech. Top of the key, Foy from distance. Worm offensive rebound again. Covington drives, fouled. And to the free throw line goes the sophomore. First team all conference. Covington's first is good. And two for two for Covington. A quiet six points for Taylor Covington. Martin going to try from distance. Left open, but did not connect. Covington going again. Floats to Foy. Kick out Smith. Extra pass around the arc. Maybe a pass too many. Burris, baseline. Got walled off. She threw it off of Alvin. Nice play there by the junior. Just heads up. You got nowhere to go. Don't walk yourself on the tightrope. 12 to shoot. Worm hits the deck. Foy jumper too strong. Screen got blown up there, but a whistle. And Coach Biggs got her hands up. How could there not be a whistle when Worm just got bulldozed over? One. No good. Worm lost it off her left hand out of bounds. Seven to shoot for Sienna Heights. Sienna Heights thinking that hit the rim. It did not. Alvin. Doesn't matter. Left handed finish. Did not according to the officials, I should say. 24-21. And caught up in traffic there. Gelso had to grab Smith. Fifth team foul takes Indiana Tech into the bonus and Corinne Smith to the free throw line for two attempts. Decker going to come in for Smith after the free throws if she makes the second. First is through for Smith. Five foot ten junior out of Waterford, Michigan. She's averaged around seven and a half to nine points all season long. Nice performance so far this evening and two for two at the stripe. And a much-deserved breather for Corinne Smith. She's played 17 out of a possible 18 minutes. Covington has not come out of this game but for a brief 20-second stretch. Gelso locking and loading and connecting. Two-point game, final two minutes of the first half here on the postseason tournament championship for the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Decker, nice work. Back to a two-possession advantage for Indiana Tech. Story of this game is far from being finished, though.
Covington nearly poked it free. Alvin driving, ran into a wall of bodies and traveled. And depending upon how Indiana Tech uses the clock here, somewhere between three and six possessions remaining in the half and very important possessions for both teams. Covington across the midcourt line. Burris down to Decker. Kick out for Worm. Worm stepped through, floated up. Soft touch for Bethany Worm. This is the largest lead of the first half. Both teams have now led by six points. Foot on the line and the two offline from Redman. Eight second difference between shot and game clock and no hustle right now for Indiana Tech. Warriors seeking perfection in this conference year. 24-0 at this point, trying to go to 25. Foy, head fake, drives, Ooh, just rolled out. Now is on Juan, her first. And double bonus, won't matter because we're shooting two here no matter what, but. Foy, first free throw is in. Largest lead of the game on either side is what we're at currently. Foy, seven points. Her and Decker each with seven. Make it eight for Erica Foy. Corinne Smith coming on for Foy on this last defensive possession. And it's one of those little moves here. Foy with one foul. You want to make sure she doesn't pick up a second. Shot clock off, final six seconds. Juan, picked up by Worm, Juan with one, step back three, no dice. And at the end of the first half of play, it's Indiana Tech with the largest lead of the game up to this point. 32-24, Warriors on top. We'll have your halftime stats coming up after this break as we take a tour around the Indiana Tech campus and look at what Tech can offer you. Hi, I'm Paxton and I'll be your tour guide today. Behind me we have Pearson Hall. This is one of our freshman dorms on campus. Today I'll be showing you dorm rooms. Come inside. And the only way to get into campus is if you have an ID card, so you'll have to like swipe into all the dorms. And then over here we have an intercom system. So through every dorm we have these like dial buttons within the dorm rooms and then outside. So say you're visiting somebody, you don't live here, you would dial their room number and then you can actually call their room and they can unlock the doors to the dorm through the intercom system and you can talk to them, they can see you through a camera and they can unlock the doors for you so they don't have to leave the room. It's really nice to have. So right here we just have our main lobby. Um, every floor has a lobby. In, in the lobbies we just have like TVs and stuff. You can watch movies, play video games. You can hang out with friends, do homework, play card games. Um, it's just a nice little hangout area to have. Um, and then right here, this is what we call our RA office. So every single night there will be an RA in the office. They're just there for your needs if you have any issues with like toilets or sinks or anything being clogged. They'll always be in there for your help. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always come see an RA here. Um, and then over here, we have mailboxes. Every student has a mailbox. They are really small. The only thing they can fit is like card-sized items. Throughout campus, you'll see our mail room when you go on your actual tour later on, and that will be in one of our other buildings where you'll receive bigger packages. All right, so here's the laundry room. So in the laundry room, you don't have to save quarters or use quarters. I know it says 25 cents, but it is included with living on campus. And then there's one on every floor and every side of the floor. So there's two on every floor in Pearson. 
So every student has keys to their dorm. And then as you come in, um, you will see our intercom system right here that I talked about in the entranceway. So this is where you would like unlock the door for visitors, talk to them. Um, and then one really nice thing about it is there is a security guard button right there. So if you were to have somebody like calling your room constantly at like 5 o'clock in the morning because some student forgot their keys, you could actually press the security guard button and it will lock them in that little box that we entered to into the dorm. It will lock both the outside doors and the inside doors and call security. So it also has a nice safety measure through within your room. You don't even have to leave your room for that. So that's really nice. And then as we enter in this way, you'll see our, this is the half of our room looks like. So there's this, and then on the other side of the suite, there's a mirrored room that looks exactly like this. Um, the desk, the dressers, and the closets, and all of the drawers and stuff all come with. Um, you can decorate it any way you'd like. And then like mini fridges, TVs, anything like that, you would bring here. And then through here, we have our bathroom. So then as we come into the bathroom, you'll see that this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then as you come through, there's one shower shared between the two rooms. And then this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then there's the mirrored room right here. So then they share a little common space out there. And then this is the exact same stuff. And it's all the same. Here we have Cal Flush. This is our other freshman dorm on campus. It is across the street from main campus. We'll be showing another freshman dorm, the laundry room, and then the hangout lobby area. Come on in. So same thing as Pearson. Um, to get into the dorms, you have to have a swipe card that unlocks and lets you in. All right, and then we have the same intercom system as we do in Pearson, and it runs throughout all of the dorms. And then in here is the lobby area where all the students hang out. We have like a TV so people can hook up like Xboxes or anything like that, DVD players, you can watch movies. I know RAs put on a bunch of activities down here. They do like movie nights um, with hot chocolate during the winter. We done, we've done like pumpkin carving and we watch a Halloween movie. Um, and so that's all done down here. And then it's the same thing over here. You can do some studying, you can hang out with friends, you can eat dinner if you want, and like I said, you can hang out with your RA, hang out with your friends, do homework, but follow me to the next part. So same thing as Pearson, every student has keys to their dorm. So when you first walk in, it's different than Pearson where there's no like two mirrored room, it's just one room with two students. The shelves, the desk, the drawers, all of the bed, like the beds and stuff, all come with. Um, and then over here, it's the same for Pearson and Cal Flesh. You can control the air condition and the heat for the room, not the entire dorm, which is so nice because then it's between you and your roommate, not through hundreds of people in one building. <laughs> and then as we walk over here, you'll see that the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is so nice because obviously if your roommate's showering, you don't have to worry about not being able to brush your teeth or even use the sink or get a drink of water or anything like that. And then as we walk over here, um, you'll see only two roommates to one bathroom. And then the shelving space. And then instead of Pearson where they have uh, closets, you would have this whole shelving space and hangar area. And then same thing as Pearson, we have the intercom system over here where you can press the security guard button, you can talk to them and then see them through the camera. Cowflesh also has mailboxes, they're the same size, they fit card sized items and again if you have any bigger packages we do have a mail room on campus. So then through here this is the laundry room. The difference between Pearson and Cowflesh is Cowflesh there's only one in the whole building and it's on the first floor whereas Pearson has them on every floor. Um, but it is the same as they are included with living here so you don't have to use quarters. It's free to the students. And that concludes the tour. Thanks for coming with. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor. Hope to see you around campus. Go Warriors! It's halftime from the Schaefer Center. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Postseason Tournament Championship tonight. The top two teams in the conference during the regular season meet in the conference championship game. Both these teams are headed to the national tournament, but Siena Heights trying to win their first regular or postseason women's basketball conference title ever 
as Indiana Tech is trying for perfection tonight, looking to be a perfect 25-0 against conference opponents this year. And the Warriors with an eight-point lead at the halftime break. Jeremy Matheny for SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Thomas Nolan is running our camera here this evening. Big thanks to him for being in here on what's a beautiful day outside, 70 degrees here in the 2-6-0. Iana Wan with eight points to lead the scoring for Siena Heights in the first half as the Saints shoot 37% from the floor, two of six from long range, two of two at the free throw line, three first half turnovers for both Siena Heights and Indiana Tech. Gelso with six points, Alvin with four, and Kayla Hinton kept off the scoreboard in the first half, though she did lead the Saints with four rebounds. For Indiana Tech, Erica Foy, just two of nine shooting, but four for four at the free throw line to go along with two blocks and five rebounds. Foy, eight points in total for Indiana Tech. She leads the scoring for the Warriors. Seven points for Genevieve Decker on three of five shooting. Six points for Taylor Covington. Five for Corinne Smith. Four for Bethany Worm. Two for Juliana Burris. Burris, two points, three rebounds, and two assists. Worm, four points, an assist but seven rebounds in just 11 first half minutes for Bethany Worm. Indiana Tech plus three on the offensive glass and plus six on the defensive glass, plus nine in terms of total rebounds in the first half of play. 11 of 25 from the field for Indiana Tech at 44%. Just one of six from three-point range. First shot and make of the game for Corinne Smith was from three. That's the only three Tech still has at this point. Nine of ten at the free throw line for the Warriors. Sienna Heights led by as many as six points in the first half at 13 to seven. That was late stages of the first quarter. The last lead for Sienna Heights came with six and a half minutes to go. It was 17 to 16. Warriors eight point advantage currently is the largest lead of the game so far. And a couple of big possessions for Indiana Tech. Offensive rebound for Bethany Worm and the stick back there off the Erica Foy miss. That put Indiana Tech in front. And then shot clock winding down here. It's Taylor Covington on the drive. Left-handed finish. That forced a Sienna Heights timeout. And out of that timeout, next offensive possession, Juliana Burris with the shot clock winding down. She'll take it herself, and that put the Warriors up by five. Indiana Tech now leading by eight points as we get ready for second half action from the Schaefer Center. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship. It'll be Siena Heights basketball to start the second half of play when we return to the Schaefer Center. Saints looking for their first ever conference postseason or regular season title in women's basketball. Indiana Tech trying for perfection. Warriors taking the floor, and we've got the second half after this four-minute break. SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that 
is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities, is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic projects. Those projects, this project-based learning, help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their, uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech are, to me, stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material, and I think that prepares them well for industry. First thing I'll tell a high school student is study, study, study. Get all the math you can possibly get. Um, I honestly believe that the critical thinking skills you learn in math courses will help you with engineering courses. The type of knowledge base that students should have coming in, they need to be problem solvers and critical thinkers. Uh, those two things are really the essence of engineering. Regardless of flavor, they're going to need to figure out there's a problem here, how do I solve it? And they, they need to think critically about that. They need to observe, listen to people, and then kick in those problem-solving skills to, uh, to solve the problem. Part of the, the growth of Indiana Tech has involved uh, a, an increasing number of international students. So I think if we can expose students to different ideas, um, different cultures, again, it makes them that much more competitive in the marketplace. In uh, the Fort Wayne area, we have uh, lots of large companies, BAE Systems, Fort Wayne Metals, General Motors, Raytheon, um, Harris Corporation, and the list goes on. We have a lot of employers that want our engineering students. Indiana Tech, um, I think, continues to serve students even beyond their graduation. We really strive to keep in touch with our alumni on a personal level just to see how they're doing, but then also they want to give back to the university because of the experiences they've had here, um, so they want to provide opportunities for other students here as well. Thirty-two, twenty-four. Indiana Tech leading Siena Heights in the championship for the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament here on SummitCitySports.com. Jaron Matheny, glad you're with us. Thomas Nolan running our camera here this evening. Want to take a moment to congratulate the Indiana Tech women's track and field program. The indoor track and field program taking home the red banner in 2024. Pretty much a perfect run through Saturday's events. Four straight national titles in the indoor track and field circuit for the Indiana Tech women. So congratulations to them. Very well deserved and well earned as we look to crown another champion here in 20 minutes of game action. Warriors and Saints conference postseason title is on the line in the Schaefer Center. Iana Wong, eight first half points, led the scoring for Siena Heights. Kayla Hinton, two fouls in that first half, nearly lost it to Covington. Alvin for Gelso, 10 to shoot. Wong kicks Alvin. Gonna have to attack, spins, and she traveled. Here, got her feet tangled up with Burris. Thought for a moment just to travel here. And so full court pressure, a little diamond set up defensively. One of our officials May have forgotten their whistle before getting out here for the second half. Quick pause, and we're back to it. First offensive possession of the second half for Indiana Tech. Burris out. Smith on the head fake. Decker towards the middle. Foy to the left elbow. Jumpers pure. Erica Foy. Largest lead of the game now for Indiana Tech. Forty-eight to forty-one, Tech victorious 
and Adrian earlier this year. Hinton's lay in no. Loose ball is out of bounds, will stay here. And then a 13 point win here at the Schaefer Center in the final day of January. Warriors have still not lost in the calendar year 2024. Last loss came on December 30th against then number two Indiana Wesleyan, now number four Indiana Wesleyan. Juan, and we'll head to the free throw line. Missed with the left hand as the shot clock was winding down, but Ayana Juan with two free throws up, coming second personal charge to Erica Foy. First attempt off for Juan. First miss at the line, but just the third free throw overall for Sienna Heights. Three for four. Juan goes one of two. Back to a nine point game. Patience for Indiana Tech to break the trap. Covington, top of the key, open look. Batted out for an offensive rebound. Juliana Burris with the extra touch. Burris driving, wraps it in. Foy, another jumper, too strong. Offensive rebound again. Shot clock reset to 20. Rebounding had been the key for Siena Heights. Covington just offline. Big possession all of a sudden for Siena Heights. And a double dribble called on Iana Juan. Turnover by Siena Heights. Covington across the logo. Warriors have done a great job of breaking apart the press and getting into some sort of set. We saw mid-stages of the second quarter, they were working it late into the clock, doing so again here. Foy bounced it in, Decker, beautiful play. Genevieve Decker, the two points off the assist from Erica Foy. 11-point Indiana Tech advantage. DeLong back in the game was limited in first half play with those two fouls, and she just got Erica Foy to pick up her third. Second of the quarter on Foy, third personal. Second team foul, and, and nothing you could do about it if you're Foy. You, as soon as the whistle came, she knew just too much contact, and that's Bethany Worm going to be on her to step in and fill the void. Hinton nearly walked with it. Gelso launching again. Oh, pretty shot. Gelso. Back to single digits in the lead for Indiana Tech. This will be the part of the floor that's a little bit more interesting to watch. Worm shooting. Open look for Bethany Worm. DeLong trying to back in. And a push against Worm. Third team foul of the quarter on Indiana Tech. Worm second personal. Hinton trying to drive, left lane line, bumps into Worm. 
officials are going to discuss. It's an and one for now. Worm trying to take the charge. Count the basket, and that's the third personal on Bethany Worm as well. And Lauren Barton getting ready to check in at a big time stretch moment for Indiana Tech here as Kayla Hinton's got an and one free throw upcoming. Free throw good. Lauren Barton, senior center at six foot even from DeWitt, Michigan, is into this game. She's had a couple of really bright performances when she's been called upon this season, but these are big time minutes now. National tournament tune up to say the least. Siena Heights fans are into it. Smith, driving, runner, falls through. Soft touch from Corinne Smith. DeLong against Barton. Good defense from Barton and a stop defensively for Indiana Tech. Worm and Foy with three fouls each. Barton. Off the assist from Covington. Make an impact, Lauren Barton. Covington the takeaway. All alone, and it's back to 11. No Erica Foy, no Bethany Worm, no problem. What a stretch for Indiana Tech. Gelso reverse lay-in, needed it. Next whistle takes us to immediate timeout. Burris off to Barton, and she's fouled. Great two-minute stretch so far from Lauren Barton. Indiana Tech leading by nine, 4.12 to go, third quarter, and we should be headed to immediate timeout. We are. We'll come back to the Schaefer Center after this. SummitCitySports.com. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship game. 4-12 left in the third quarter and Lauren Barton's going to the free throw line for Indiana Tech. Two points for Barton. And she's come in to replace both Foy and Worm. And she hits the free throw. I mean, these are crucial minutes that you need off the bench. And Lauren Barton, when she's been called upon this year, she's had the answer and she's doing it again. One for two at the line. Yeah. 
Geis Finch. Face up to Long. Fades away over Barton. And gets it to go. Eight point game. Saw Martin come in and play some valuable minutes for Sienna Heights at the end of that first half. Barton turned it over and she'll just pick up the foul here. Mistake on the turnover, but the right decision to foul. And now Amaris Lowry is going to come in as Indiana Tech maybe giving up some size here. It was the fifth team foul against Indiana Tech, so it's going to be two free throws for Wong. Two free throws. Double bonus the rest of the quarter for Sienna Heights. And the first is through for Juan. The momentum swinging back and forth. Seesaw continues. And a six-point Indiana Tech lead currently. Just increased the lead to 11, and Covington gets it back to eight. Big-time minutes from Taylor Covington right now, and she's got 10 points to join Foy in double figures. Decker right there with nine. Iana Wan and Jillian Gelso, 11 points each for Sienna Heights. A charter member of this conference, and a loose ball. Decker getting it to Covington and no travel called as Decker came up off the knee. Patient on the offensive approach for Indiana Tech. Burris pulls. A chance again to bring this back to two possessions. Lowry tried to jump the passing lane. Geis Finch, floater, short. And Decker, some big minutes from Genevieve right now on the inside. Extra help from Barton underneath. But Foy and Worm, those two roadblocks defensively, both with three fouls. And on the bench currently. Covington to the corner. Burris, head fake, pulls up to 10. Off the heel. Hinton has two fouls, but has stayed out of that third range. Guys Finch offline on a quick pull. And Indiana Tech is okay running some clock here to get this third quarter winding down. Just one team foul against Sienna Heights in this quarter. Barton, Decker. Shot clock to nine. Lowry catch and shoot was blocked on the way up and then knocked out of bounds off of Indiana Tech last. Both Barton and Decker tried to throw it off of Alvin. Gelso, Redman back in for Sienna Heights. Corinne Smith going to come back on for Indiana Tech. And Covington going to get a breather and use this 117. Here to get a real breather for Indiana Tech. Get the little extra bonus of the end of the quarter pause as well. Get Taylor maybe three minutes off the court. Redman got inside of Barton. Redman two free throws. Barton second. Too strong in the first of two free throws. Redmond's second attempt is out as well. 
And it is Indiana Tech basketball. Final minute of the third quarter. Championship game in the postseason tournament. The Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Burris. Screen set down by Barton. Ten to shoot. Burris makes contact. Offensive foul as DeLong was camped out in the paint. Seven and a half second difference between shot and game clock. This will not be the final possession of the quarter. Juan picked up her dribble. And it floated off for Redmond. Driving on Decker, got an extra step. Missed it. Barton rebound, shot clock is off. And Indiana Tech could grow this lead back to double digits before the end of the third quarter. Burris just off and we head to the fourth and final quarter of play with a single digit deficit on the scoreboard Indiana Tech 45 Siena Heights 37 can the Saints break through and win their first championship in women's basketball or will it be perfection for Indiana Tech don't go anywhere Final 10 minutes from the Schaefer Center. Coming up next, SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. 45-37, Indiana Tech leading Siena Heights. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship game from the Schaefer Center tonight. Indiana Tech basketball, Erica Foy is back into this game. Three personal fouls for both Foy and Worm. And an eight-point lead for Indiana Tech to begin the fourth. SummitCitySports.com, I'm Jaron Matheny. Hinton knocked it out of bounds. Thomas Nolan running our camera tonight. Decker, too strong. Eleven points, largest lead for Indiana Tech. Six points for Siena Heights as DeLong fouled on the way up. And who is this on for Indiana Tech? It's on Covington, a little bit of a break for the Warriors because Foy was in the area. Covington's first. DeLong foot in the nail. And the first free throws out. Missed opportunities at the line this evening for Siena Heights. They're six of ten. And DeLong knows one for two. Well, that's convenience store shooting. 7 of 11 at the charity stripe for, for Siena Heights. Indiana Tech at 10 of 12. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 
Burris attacks off to Foy. Foy backing around, three to go. Put it up, no, DeLong board. And this game could get back to four or five points with a bucket on this end for Siena Heights. Postseason tournament championship crown on the line. A win for Siena Heights would also mark a new program record in terms of wins in a single season. Juan step through, left hand, and just a little bit too much. Decker set the screen, curling around up top, Covington. Catch, shoot, and just too strong. Warriors have not found that outside shot in this game. Redmond backing in. Foy stays straight up, but Redmond gets the bucket. Less than eight minutes to go in this championship game. Five points separating Indiana Tech and Siena Heights. Ten points, the margin of victory for Tech in the two games during the regular season. Decker, floater, yes. And Genevieve Decker, 11 points, joins Covington and Foy who each have 10. Three ball off the rim and out. Burris pushing it up the floor. Decker looking for Covington off her hand. And Juan's going to pick it up instead of an over and back. Juan got rejected by Smith, but too strong of contact. Looked like a pretty clean block from this angle. the replay oh hoo, hoo, hoo. Juan's first free throw is in this pleasure certainly from the student section for Indiana Tech here's the possession before uh, Decker with the lay in Juan missed the second Points being left from 15 feet out. Bethany Worm is in for Indiana Tech. Smith lost her pivot foot, travels. And Sienna Heights again trying to pick away at this Indiana Tech lead. Redmond backing in, turns. No good against Worm, and she got the defensive rebound. Seven rebounds in the first half for Bethany Worm. She's dealt with foul trouble here in the second. Loose ball. Hinton rips it away. Juan has it. No numbers for the Saints as DeLong is behind the play. Juan still gets inside. Left-handed lay-in. It's a four-point game. And a timeout for Indiana Tech. 6.03 to go in this one. Championship environment at the Schaefer Center. Summit City Sports. .com. It's really important for freshmen to realize you get out of college what you put into it. If you dedicate yourself to your classes and to your projects and to what you're doing in college, you're going to have a really great experience here. I wish someone would have told me my freshman year that it's important to prioritize, knowing what's important, what's not important, knowing what I need to do opposed to what I want to do. The two things that I think all freshmen should know is uh, buy a parking permit so you don't rack up a bunch of fines and tickets, and also uh, make sure you go to class because it seems like a good idea when you're skipping, but then it's not worth it in the end when you fail the test or don't turn in homework. 
As an international student, my advice for the freshmen is to not be afraid to make friends because your friends here will end up being your family away from home. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to put on, anything that you want to showcase on campus, you can. There's always people around to help you do what you want to do here. Make sure that you always take time for yourself to make sure that you're okay. Because college can be very overwhelming as far as like schoolwork and friends and sports and just like everyday life. Always just make sure that you get what you need to get done. It's important to have a relationship with your professors because you're, you become more personable with them. You start to engage in the material more. They can give you recommendations, especially once you get out of college. You definitely want to put them down as like references. And if you have a better personal relationship, it just makes the whole learning experience go smoothly. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament championship and a four-point game as we hit the final six-minute stretch. SummitCitySports.com live from Indiana Tech this evening. Women's basketball postseason crown will be awarded. Foy driving against DeLong. Offensive rebound, Worm. Burris. Gives up right, Foy. Got to her spot, just off on the jumper. Gotta have it on both ends of the floor now if you're Indiana Tech. Every possession matters this late in the game. Looking back, Alvin floats it through and it's a two point game. Closest it has been since the five minute mark of the second quarter. Midway through the fourth. Covington, kick out, Burris, cash! Juliana Burris when you need her most. Big time shot. Alvin. Back to one possession. Coach Siljebeck claps her hands, looking for a stop defensively. Burris got position, got blocked by DeLong. Foy finds it. Shot clock to single digits. Covington, blocked, worm, no! And it's a shot clock violation as that did not hit the iron on the first attempt. 3.55 remaining. A chance to tie on this possession for Sienna Heights. Hinton into the paint. Tried to finish left hand, no. Tapped around, last touched by Indiana Tech. Ten to five, Sienna Heights outscoring Indiana Tech here in the fourth. Sienna Heights, three of eight from three-point land today. It's DeLong on the inside, one-point game. Championship environment, can you say it? National tournament tune-up for both these teams. Decker back to the scorer's table. Worm for three, bank is open! Bethany Worm. Three for 14 for Indiana Tech from beyond the arc today. Defense, 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 
one. And a timeout taken by Sienna Heights. 11 on the shot clock, 2.40 to play in the fourth quarter. It's a 30 second timeout, so we keep it right here. Bethany Worm from beyond the arc making the impact for Indiana Tech. And two made threes for the Warriors after just one make up until this fourth quarter from the outside. When it counts the most, Indiana Tech finding a way. We'll take a 30 second pause and come back to the Schaefer Center after this. SummitCitySports.com. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more. 53-49, Indiana Tech in front, down to two minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. For SummitCitySports.com, Jerry Matheny, glad you're with us. Thomas Nolan running our camera and doing a fantastic job this evening as we've got the final 240 of this postseason conference tournament championship game. One made three for Indiana Tech through the first three quarters, and the last two makes for the Warriors have come from the outside. Gelso for Juan, shot clock trickling down to five. Got a hustle, Alvin, pull up jumper, too strong off the heel. And Indiana Tech can milk this clock a little bit here. Foy for Smith. And a foul on Sienna Heights trying to run through the screen of Bethany Worm. Worm, seven points, ten rebounds, and an assist. Eleven points for Genevieve Decker. Leads Indiana Tech, Iana Wong with 14 to lead all scores. Just one team foul in the quarter on Siena Heights. Two against Indiana Tech. Arrow favors the Saints on a jump ball. Final two minutes. Burris. Creates the separation, got it off and hits it! Third three of the fourth quarter, Juliana Burris, get out of here! One, too strong, offensive rebound, Alvin sticks back. Minute. 25, clock rolls. Indiana Tech, a chance to bring this game down to its final minute. And that's exactly what Coach Biggs wants to do. Five on the clock, Burris. On the attack against DeLong, lost it on the way up. Shot clock back to 30 inside a minute. Timeout, Siena Heights. 23 on the shot clock, just inside of 50 seconds remaining in the game. And it is a 30 second timeout. Indiana Tech, shot clock going down. Burris creates the space herself. <laughs> Unbelievable. Clutch from Juliana Burris. 
just a junior. And transfer in here to Indiana Tech, and boy, where would they be without her? Eight points in this game, two of five from deep, six rebounds, and a pair of assists in 37 minutes played. Out of the timeout. Got a hustle for Sienna Heights. Gelso deep pull from 30, it's off. One offensive rebound. Loose ball. Alvin nearly lost it. Time ticking away. Hinton runs into Worm. Offensive foul. Bethany Worm draws the charge. Shot clock is dark in Indiana Tech. A chance to potentially ice it. The emotion from the grad student. Monumental turn for Indiana Tech. Warriors with a 30 second pause of their own. Let's look back at it. Shot clock going down. We'll take a deeper look at this one here. Shot clock winding down. Worm left side. Oh, yeah. Just planted her feet. She was ready for it. Biggest moment of the night. And how about a little bit of the emotion on the back end of this one? Offensive foul. And Bethany Worm, her face says it all. Leader. True leader. And Indiana Tech, Sienna Heights has to foul three times to put the Warriors at the line. Into the backcourt, Covington goes to Smith. And now Hinton with a reach-in foul, 20 seconds to go. But Indiana Tech run that same little play here. You can waste another five seconds. It's the fourth on Hinton. And Hinton's on Smith right now. That's where Covington went off the first pass from Worm. Instead, it's to Burris. Got a foul if you're Sienna Heights. And there's the whistle. Three seconds came off again. And they've still got a foul to give. Guys Finch, her second. Worm in for Burris. Guys Finch fouls on the baseline. Two more seconds come off. And Juliana Burris, 70% this season from the free throw line, can really put this game on ice. And the first is through. Timeout, Sienna Heights off the rebound. 57-51, Indiana Tech. It's a full timeout and the final timeout for the Saints. Sienna Heights, about 14 seconds to go, and, and it is one of those things where you got to get down the floor. you got to get off the first look you've got from three-point range and hope that Indiana Tech misses on the other end. And we'll see...
if Indiana Tech can achieve perfection. Just 14 seconds away from doing so. And one miss from Siena Heights pretty much puts us there. Juan to inbound. DeLong right back to her. 12 and 11, Hinton gets the touch, clock winding, Hinton throws it up, got the foul. 7.6 to go, time's just running out. <laughs> Student section has brought their keys out, now shaking them if you can hear it. The jingling. Hinton first free throw is in, and now you're probably looking at, uh, you gotta miss here unless they're going to make and foul. Hinton made it. Gelso off. And Redman back in. Worm can run the end line, but Indiana Tech wants to talk about it and advance this ball forward in the process. 7.6 seconds remaining in this game. 30-second pause. And why don't we get to experience this one more time? Biggest play of the fourth quarter, and it's Bethany Worm taking the charge. That expression afterwards, but it's really this. Trying to close out her final game at the Schaefer Center with one more W and to go to 3-0 against Siena Heights this season. One timeout remaining for Tech if they need to take it. Worm inbounding right in front of her own bench. Reflected out, stays with Indiana Tech. About .5 comes off. Vice going to come in for DeLong. Inbound deep to Foy. She goes up, collects, fouled by Alvin, 5.5, and that should pretty much do it. Alvin's first, DeLong back in. As is Gelso, too many on the floor right now for Sienna Heights. DeLong's gonna come off. Foy's free throw is through, and Erica Foy locking up a perfect conference season for Indiana Tech. Hinton going up the floor. Alvin at the horn. Perfection in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference for the 23-24 season. Your regular season and postseason champions, the Indiana Tech Warriors, 58. 53 over Siena Heights. Time to raise the trophy once again on a gutsy performance for Indiana Tech. The coach of the year in the conference, Jesse Biggs, the player of the year, Erica Foy. And it was everyone coming together when it mattered the most to get this W. Siena Heights is headed for the national tournaments. Don't worry, Saints fans, you got a chance still to see your side in action at an even bigger stage. 28 and three overall, 25 and zero against conference opponents this year. And they are rocking out inside the Schaefer Center tonight. 
And before we log off, let's turn it over to our public address announcer to present the trophy for the WHAC postseason conference crown. More still to come, hopefully, for Indiana Tech. The selection show for the national tournament for NAI women's basketball will take place on March 7th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. March 15th and 16th, the NAIA opening round. Picture perfect. 25-0 against conference opponents this year for that group of ladies on the floor right now. And what a time it is to celebrate for Indiana Tech. Final from the Schaefer Center. Warriors win over Siena Heights, 58-53. Your final score. Time to cut down the nets for Indiana Tech.
Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. We have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals, 
I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior.